Okay, you need a Speech Sound King. I can't actually remember what he's from. He's from a set, but he's the Speech Sound King. His mouth moves. And he's got this, which the children love because it hits on things. So the Speech Sound King, I'll send a link so that you can order one of those. You need the Speech Sound King. Everything evolves around the story about the Speech Sound King. Right, now in your prep class or your early years class, you also need a hat. I got this from Ikea. Because every morning you'll do what's underneath the hat. hat. So in the morning you might have the hat and you can do this in all different ways, but you're basically speaking in speech sounds. So what's under the hat today? Oh, it's a f-er-og. F-er-og. What's the word? F-er-og. Frog. Now you might hear that that's the word, and then they look at it. You might hear that's the word, but if they've got poor phonemic awareness, they won't. So if they've got poor phonemic awareness at the beginning, which is the biggest predictor of reading and spelling failure or success that there is out of everything, if I was to say s -n -a -k, what's the word? They can't hear that that's the word snake. s -n -a -k, snake. So doing things like this really helps. Also get them to do it. So the children might say, what shall we put underneath the hat? And the children might go, and remember the children are going to do it from their left to right, so you're mirroring it. So the children might say, it's the frog. Frog. So they also have to be able to do it the other way around, so they know it's frog, so they also have to be able to use the duck hands. Okay, so we've got our hat from Ikea. Another useful thing from Ikea was this. Someone might do this and might have all of these out on a table. So I might say to them, can you put the b -l -u one on? So we're trying to see if they can hear which is the b -l -u, b -l -u. Which one is it? Can you put the red, red one on it? And of course this is also helping with their colours. Can you find me the y -e or oh yellow one what about the g -er -een? green one loads of things you can do with that you might say what am i taking off and then the children have got to use their duck hands so they go g -er -een? green what am i taking off y -e -er oh yellow what am i taking off er -ed red so just in the colour uh, you need these are just dog toys or things these are of my IKEA as well quite nice because they make a little noise that's going to annoy you after five minutes but it's a nice little treat so we will say where's the pig and they want to hear that it's pig or what is this pig pig oink oink all sorts to do with those duck duck what else have we got? You need a speech sound camera. They sold these in Coles. Hopefully they still sell them. Because every time we think about sounds, like if I want to do the word snake or duck, let's do duck. I want to do duck, I would think d -a -k, duck. If I could see that d that I have there, so d -a -k. If I can see the d there and took a picture with my speech sound camera of d, what might it look like? And that's when we think it might look like that. What is it? D, a, k. And we're actually getting the children to almost imagine that there are sounds there. What does it look like? And they close their eyes and visualise or use their speech sound camera. This is from Ikea as well. So it's our hut house. And again, you might just do this one-to-one. -one. You might have a TA that sits and does this or has fun or whatever. And you might say, could you put the b -l -u -s -k -w -e? b -l -u blue. Try and do the sounds and then say the whole word. Don't do the whole... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my roof. Um, so we want to put the b -l -u blue s -k -w -e. Square. I want to blue, put the blue square in it. There's a bit of problem solving as well. You might say to them, what am I putting in there? It's the red 
red, circ, oh, circle. All sorts of things. So again, it's color recognition, but it's on shape. You can do the shape recognition as well. Triangle, circle. Uh, also, you might do these are from IKEA as well. Just plastic spoons and what have you, but again, different colors. So you might say you might have two or three children, and you might be very fast and do a very nice fun game. The boys love this. Who's got the but or ooh, sp, ooh, mm. Okay, so with the boys especially, they love this because it gets really fast and furious and energetic. I might say, where's the b-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-u-
So supposing the child was reading this, this is actually in the purple level for SSP, so they will go, so they'll sit there with their hippo, and the hippo only speaks in speech sounds, so they have to do the code for the, for the, for the hippo, so the hippo understands what they're doing. So they'll go the ah, uh, the, hot, hot, dog, dog, hot, hot, and they'll just do it with the, um, with the hippo. If you're doing paired decoding, that's when one person does the sounds, the other says the word. So, Mrs. Corey, if I do the sounds and then you say the word the, the, uh, the, hot, hot, dog, dog, hot, hot, hot. Sorry, the, the hot dog hat. Let me do this again, sorry. <laughs> so, if you're doing speedy, speedy paired decoding, the person who's pointing is the one who's saying the word. I'm the one who's going to follow the sounds. So, I follow the sounds and you say the word the, uh, the, hot, hot, hot dog, dog. Hut. Hut. And then we say it together. The hot, the hot dog, dog hut. And then oh. you might talk about it. So it's text first, look at the picture afterwards. The hot dog, dog hut, hut. Which is the word that tells us if it's warm or cold or hot. Mm. Hot. Hot. Hot is that one. And yes, we could look at the picture there that says it's hot. So you're talking about what it means as well. But basically, speedy decoding means you'll find the children there and the hippo is the one who is often doing the sounds. And they'll go, the hot because they can hear the sounds that the hippo is doing or they do it the other way around and it would have it's like a reading dog but it's a it's allowed in classrooms another thing that they love especially if you don't have it out all the time it'll drive you mad um, again from ikea is you might say can you do the g or e one g or e can you do the g or e green one can you do the or ed red one now, if you've got a child with really poor phonemic awareness, then if you say y, e, l, o, they can't hear it. They've got poor phonemic awareness. So rather than saying y, e, l, o, and they don't know, you can say yellow. Y, e, l, o, yellow. I'm not trying to trick them. Um, or you might just go y, e, l, o, yellow. Now can you hit it? And you're just getting the brain to hear it. R, e, d, red. But all oo blue. But all oo blue. G er e n green, and you might get them to do as many bangs as I did sounds. G er e n green. G er e n green. Er ed red. Y e l o yellow. Oh, I could quite have fun doing that. G er e n. Green. Ha! Oh, didn't do it. Er, ed, red. So it's basically colours, phonemic awareness, but we're actually doing things, and that's the most important thing. Also make sure you're using the SSP visual prompts. And what they are, it's a visual prompt for a word that is created using speech sounds that we're going to explore in the actual code level. Um, for the four SSP levels. So in the first level, which is green, we're exploring s a t p e n and the children are learning the first picture for that speech sound you might think of it as s a t p i n so they use their duck hands lines and numbers for spelling those words sip ant spin spits um tan what have you and they're also going to to um read those words so they're going to do follow the sound say the word put it in pin at and to ant to it and tin put at and t s pants etc so really use these because um even whilst you're not using letters and you're just using them for phonemic awareness it's really important but the reason we use these is because then when we introduce we've been listening for um s at put it in, let's say, and we're using duck hands, lines and numbers, so we're just creating the words without even looking at letters. When I then start to say, well, if you close your eyes and take a picture, or take a picture with the speech sound camera, of that sound we were listening for, sss, what might it look like? And then it makes sense when they see a picture of that speech sound. And remember, it's just one of the pictures of that speech sound, because like, for example, on this one, there are about 11 but the S is the first one we learn when we're actually learning about speech sound picks in the green level.